Alchemy, how does Bitwig stand out compared to all of the other DAWs? Well, today, folks, I am going to learn you to one of the biggest features, which is the sampler, which is an absolute powerhouse when combined with its own features, also with the set of modulators. Now, as most of you know, Bitwig has modulators built into every single device, which means that you can pretty much make almost every VST modular. For example, I've got this snare right here that is tied to an envelope follower on the resonance. <laughs> And you can actually see that there is a ton of possibilities when it comes to both arrangement and sound design. And I'm here to convince you why I think you should give the sampler a try within Bitwig. Now, Ableton is fantastic and it has its own kind of set of both a simpler and a sampler to where they're both kind of like something that takes an audio. But for the most part, you can actually get the best of both worlds between a granular synth, a wavetable synth, and a classical, both simpler and sampler all within this single device here. Now, before we get into that, I just released my new Eternum pack, which is going to feature some of the sounds that you hear in this. It's available right now. And then also the drums are available in my pack as well for the Ether EX. So if you like any of those sounds, then check that out. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Let's get into why this is super awesome. To start off, what I've done is resampled one of these basses that I have, and this is pretty much the sound that we get initially. I'm just gonna hop around. <laughs> So as you can see, it's just a long cut of lots of different sounds and stuff. And what we're able to do is actually, I'm gonna duplicate this, is take this and throw it into a sampler. And I've got all of these modulators set up here, mostly macros to where we can do some really interesting things. So the first thing that I wanna demonstrate is something that is not exclusive to Bitwig, but is definitely going to be helpful in your sound design bass making process in case if you like to do a lot of resampling. The first thing is if I change the velocity here, then what that's going to do is allow me to change the sample start as opposed to having to find a different slicer or something. Now, forgive me because this actually has a low pass filter on it, but when I change this and move this off, let me go ahead and delete that. You can actually hear that anytime I change the sample start from here, it's going to play a different sample. Now, the reason why this is significant in particular is because unlike simpler, where you can set things into a slicer, which is great, this actually allows you to not only go through and select between the different places of the entire sample, but you can also change the pitch of it. And that's just freaking awesome because it allows you to still play melodic elements while still changing the actual pitch of this in its own right. One of the issues that you might run into with simpler versus this sampler in particular is that you might be like, well, how do I find different amounts of slices and stuff? And so what I've gone and done is actually allowed myself to think about this like, not necessarily in a mathematical terms, but consider this. You have 128 different sample starts with velocity. And so what happens is whenever you take a loop region, maybe something like this, it's going to divide every single velocity up between this loop region here. And so what that allows us to do is pretty much have a different set of slices, a different set of loop points. And the longer your sample, the more variation you're gonna have, of course, but this allows you to have a nice variation of dividends in between that. Now, unfortunately, you can't necessarily, you know, go into like beats mode or whatever, or re-slice things on the fly. And so I'll give credit to that, but you can do something to where you can slice these into different chops, such as the slice in place mode, or you can slice it to the multi-sample. However, I find that this is a lot better because as opposed to trying to find different beats out of this, unless if you're doing drums, that's a particular use case, then this allows me to have more variation with that in general. Now, if you know about Bitwig Sampler, you know that there's actually three different warp modes that we can choose from. The first one is repitch, which is the classic sampler. Sorry, if it plays back at a lower pitch, it's gonna play back slower. If it plays back at a higher pitch, it's going to play back faster. But you also have a wavetable mode here that allows us to kind of change the overall timbre about how this is. <laughs> Now, one of the cool things behind this too is that we can actually map the freeze button here to change the actual position of the entire sample. And so if we move this around, maybe where the length is or the playhead, then you can hear how we have a bunch of different variations. And not only that, we can change like the format and the speed and stuff too, although I don't have this particularly mapped. <laughs> the 
there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can hop into from that. Because of this, we can also change the warp mode into probably the most useful, which is actually the texture mode on here. And this allows us to change this into a granular synth. And what's amazing about this is that for one, if we turn the freeze off, then we'll just have a different play means of playback. The grain is too small, so we're gonna adjust this. But again, we have all of the other controls available to us, which we can change the velocity, we can change the sample offset, we can change all the things. What I can also do is turn the freeze on, and now we should have some really interesting kind of static movement. Now one thing to keep in mind is that if you look closely, you'll see that the playhead is actually over here, but if we come back into this and we change this down to the first velocity, then that will allow us to actually kind of move and transition between the playhead in general. And this actually works better if you're working within this within the MIDI roll, because that way you can actually control how all of this is going to play and where it's actually going to move. So if we just kind of set this to a loop here and pull this down, you'll see that now the playhead is at the very beginning. And so playing with all of this, we can start to mess with this now and pretty much scroll freely through the entire range. And this is amazing because not only can you do all of this as far as just shaping the sound, but you can do all of this while you are actually making a beat and automation. The one caveat to this is that you have to re-trigger a new audio, or sorry, a new MIDI note in order for the changes to actually apply. But think about all the possibilities that you have between this with making insane basses that you can twist and distort and mess up just with the power of this. So not only that, but if I wanted to change this into a bunch of different bass selections to choose from, what I can do is come over here and I'll just use the same one because I know it will work. I can duplicate all of these in a specific way and make changes to them or whatever, and right click and go to distribute select equally. And now if I have different lube regions or so within this, I can control different aspects of places that I wanna select. And you can do this up to 128 different times. But the interesting thing about this is that not only can you do that, but I'm gonna delete these just for the sake of efficiency. You can granularize up to 128 different samples all at once. So if you're trying to make soundscapes or something and you change this into freeze, you turn these LFOs on, if I come over here to the texture mode here, you'll see that this is being controlled by these LFO or by these randomizers. Whenever I play this, I need to throw a limiter on here, otherwise it's gonna be insanely loud. Whenever I play this and maybe add some kind of reverb, we have instant access to soundscapes. Now I'm gonna get rid of most of these because we don't actually need them, but you get the concept or we can incorporate other things like Foley or whatever into this. So I can easily grab a Foley loop in sample pack, not Foley, Foley. Grab one of these. I can grab something from this and toss that in. Maybe we'll get rid of these other ones. And now whenever I play this, we've got ourselves a soundscape. And I can change between all this by manipulating the playhead or the grain size.
And so if I were to just take a single note like that and maybe drag this over, and I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but it's worth a shot. If I come over here and leave that in, and we paste this, I've already got a cool little groove set up to how we can control this. And now I've got myself a nice, easy kind of background thing in order to have some texture behind this little drum groove that I made. I'm just gonna add a little bit of a high pass here. And now let's go ahead and take a listen to this arrangement that we have. Pretty sick. But because we already have something like that, what we can do is duplicate this. And I wanna show you one more amazing trick that is within Bitwig that I personally love. You can actually, maybe let's say we've got a main riff or something and we wanna create a long fill with this. I'm gonna grab all of these here. And what we can do is actually use operators in a way to create an awesome kind of like insane bass bar fill. And the way that we do that is we take one long note. This is almost a complete bar long. <laughs> And from that, whenever we move this here, we need to come on over here. I'm gonna actually incorporate that at the top. Now that we have something like this, we can come on over to the operators and select 16th notes. But as you look down here, you can actually see that you can change the velocity of these. So you're essentially able to create an insane bass fill from this just by having this here. And you can set this to be as much as you want, but for this particular case, let's say you're just kind of taking this and you know trying to create something in general, you can actually do these insane different fills from this and kind of change it and tune it to your liking in order to make it more diverse and more fun. So you can do that. You can also do an exponential rhythm with this. Just a really cool, insane fill. And then what you can also do with this stuff is let's say you're letting this jam, you can set up operators on all of these, except for maybe the downbeat bass. So I'm gonna grab everything here and maybe not mess with the, the call and the actual response with these. And I can set these to actual number values here to where they're gonna play on a chance. And then maybe what we can also do is set these to every recurrences. So every other one, this is going to potentially play something different. So now that we have something like that, we've pretty much made ourselves a cool, nice and diverse, complete baseline just from having a couple of different parameters set up between the sampler and the MIDI editor on here. Where stuff gets really crazy is the fact that whenever we come into this kind of stuff, I'm so excited about these things, you can actually start to manipulate all of the parameters that are within here in order to create something even more diverse. Now it's not always going to work, but just the sheer fact that I can come into this and let's say I wanted to change this right here for a freeze, so I can automate this and set that off and then turn this particular section on. And then what I'll do is I'll sweep the grain size just like this and turn that up. And then what I'll also do is grab the play mode here and turn this up. And from that point on, we're gonna have a cool and interesting bass variation fill from this that will be granularized without having to do resampling. Pretty interesting in that sense. And it's a great way again to kind of transition into getting into lots of different fills and whatnot. So 
the ability to have fun or the amount of variation that you can create both with the phase plant patches that I create and also the sampler is immense. And I've got a course coming out pretty soon on how to implement this better, but I'm also practicing myself and I wanna make sure that that course is gonna be absolutely mind blowing for you. However, you can get all this stuff right now. Go download Bitwig, go download the sampler, go get my patches from Faceplant on my website at alchemy.com and you will have a heyday with creating all different kinds of bass lines that will be super fun. So I hope that was super interesting to you. I kind of want to see how this is going to play out and see if I can make it any more interesting. Maybe what I'll do is I'll start from high on this and then I'll go lower so that way it'll kind of turn into something a little bit different. Sweet. And then I'll kind of just bring this back. And then as we move this back, we can turn the freeze back off, kind of like so, and make sure that this is on beat. And it's really important that you move this to be on grid whenever the new note hits, otherwise it's gonna sound kind of wonky, but. Like and subscribe everybody.